Hello, and welcome to Starside Chat, episode 34. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Aaron. Hello. And I'm Zach Owens. So, Aaron, tell me, what have you been up to? Zach, I have some big news for you. Okay. Uh, This week, on Monday, which was yesterday as we're recording this, a little inside baseball about when we record podcasts, but uh, Monday... There, a Culver's opened up in the town that I live in. Ooh. I used to work at Culver's when I was in high school. I know. But I always think about you whenever I go into a Culver's. I haven't had Culver's in a while. I love a Culver's butter burger. I have to say, I, I, don't, know, I don't know if we've talked about this in the podcast. Well, I don't know why would we have or why we would have. But uh, I used to only eat cheeseburgers with just cheese and lettuce on them. And then recently, I started eating burgers as they come to me. Uh, without any alteration whatsoever. And I did it at McDonald's and Wendy's, and I did Culver's, and Culver's was the best one in that, like, way. Uh, well, as someone who worked there in high school, I would maybe be a little bit biased, but I always thought that their uh, cheeseburgers were the best. They're so good. And they have those cheese curds, and they're crinkle-cut fries, and there's a flavor of the day with their custard. Or is it ice cream? Is it custard or ice cream? It's custard. Not not so affiliated good. with Culver's at all, but... <laughs> <laughs> not sponsored by Culver's. But if they want to sponsor us, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> that's the biggest news that's happened in my life recently. What about you? Yeah, not a whole lot going on lately, just back pain and doing schoolwork no so yeah we we didn't record last week but so it's been a while but i have a question for you we talked last time about oh i don't remember if we did it on the podcast or not about that new taco john's uh oh yeah quesadilla taco and i you got it how was it it was pretty good i mean obviously i went there mainly for the potato olays because that's the reason to go to taco john's but so good uh yeah it was good it was I expect it. I think it needs to be a little bit more like grilled and crunchy. That's what I wanted. Yeah. I was expect based on the pictures, it seems like it's going to have a crunchy outside, yeah. but it does not. Well, so when you think quesadilla, you definitely think that this is like a, a, tort- a tortilla with cheese in the middle that has been grilled on both sides. And so mm-hmm. it's like maybe it's just because that's how they do it at most other uh like american mexican places but <laughs> i don't know i wanted that's what i wanted it to be and instead it was basically a soft shell taco that had cheese in the middle yeah it's an issue it's it's not bad though it's solid anyway we should probably move <laughs> into uh the news of the not week. a great way to segue out of that but, yeah there's not how do you <laughs> Uh, so why don't you tell us about the hot new trailers that are coming up this week? I guess I put a lot of these in here. You put a lot of these on here. I I know, I don't know if you've seen all of these, but I feel like the last two weeks it has just been a massive dump of new trailers on YouTube, and Mm. they're really loud in my headphones right now. (laughs) Uh, but the first one that came up that got my attention was a movie called The Dead Don't Die by Jim Jarmusch. I don't know if you're a Jarmusch fan or not, but I... I have seen, uh, Broken Flowers and ghost dog but only those two i i like a lot of his movies i didn't necessarily love only lovers left alive but oh i saw that too i forgot about that but it was all right and this movie just maybe it seems a little bit more wes anderson-y just be uh, yeah. in the tone of it and just because of the fact that the trailer has i think it's a rolling stone song uh, over the soundtrack or maybe i'm wrong i don't remember what it is exactly i'm not listening to it at the moment but it looks really funny and watch that trailer and listen to the way adam driver says ghouls <laughs> and you'll want to listen to it again because it's hilarious and great i don't know I, the whole zombie thing i'm usually pretty tired of like i feel it's pretty played out but i like bill murray i like adam driver i like uh tilda swinton and i like jim jarmusch so uh, Who's doing a crazy accent in this movie? She is. Well, she can play like the craziest things and do it in such a genuine way that you buy it. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm I'm down for that. Uh, the second trailer I put in here was a new Amazon show called Too Old to Die Young by Nicholas Winding Refn. I don't Did you ever see Drive? Yeah, I loved Drive and I this was not on my radar at all. You sent me this in a text and I was just I woke up and watched it and I was uh 
I was struck by how good this looks. Yeah, I was pretty blown away as well. I didn't necessarily love his last movie. I think it was, was it Neon Demon or was there something else in between that and this? Mm, he didn't do that weird Thai movie with Ryan Gosling, did he? Uh, Actually, I think maybe you're right. Maybe he did do that. Let me check. Because that was a crazy movie that I watched and I enjoyed it. But I did not see Neon Demon, although I did read the plot to it and come to the. Uh, I decided I did not want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, that movie. The conclusion is what I was thinking of. The thing about his movies is that they're very attractively shot. They they have a very cool aesthetic to them. Mm-hmm. And also, me and uh, my friend Ryan, who did the music for our podcast, were talking about how Drive was sort of the movie that introduced Synthwave to us. And so uh, it's kind of the first sort of pop culture thing that I can think of that really popularized that style of music. That and also just like mixed like the synth wave mixed with how he shoots his movies. Yeah. Give them like an like almost an ethereal feel. Well, and like a lot of the movies include especially Neon Demon uh, and to an extent the trailer for Too Old to Die Young have this very lynchian uncanny vibe to it that Mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of twin peaks in a way maybe that's just me but i don't know i i am into it it's another amazon show we talked i think on our last podcast about how amazon has a lot of cool stuff coming up and that we haven't seen any stuff about yeah and they haven't really shown off anything and then this one which i don't think anyone was anticipating i don't remember hearing anything about it and then just all of a sudden one day last week a bunch of people started posting the trailer on twitter and i was like oh Mm -hmm. man this looks really good and i did not even hear anything about this up to this point so have you watched an amazon show i have yeah well so i watch regularly the grand tour oh yeah i forgot about and I I watched like older British sitcoms on Amazon Prime. Like I watched Spaced and Black Books on there. But other than like, I don't think I've really watched a lot of their original content, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I watched a, mo- a TV show. I think it only had like eight episodes, but it's called Forever with Fred Armisen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember telling you about that. And it was really good. It had Maya Rudolph in it as well. And I just like, I was like, what is this? I think I saw someone on Twitter saying like, man, episode to episode, I have no idea what is going to happen next in this show. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I watched the first episode and I was like, man, that was crazy. And then I watched the second episode and I was like, that was even crazier. And then I just kept saying that to myself, like, man, this is getting crazier. Uh, And it was really good. And I think that's having a second season. But that's the only Amazon original that I've watched but uh, the production quality was great, and uh, it was, like, on par with a Netflix show. Yeah, I think I've only seen, like, two or three episodes of that show, but it did strike me, kind of like you were saying, similar to, what is that sitcom about heaven? The Good Place? Yeah, The Good Place. So it kind of reminded me, you know how at the end of every season of that show, the nature of things changes in some yeah. like really <laughs> crazy way and you're like, oh, yeah. well, how is this next season going to play out? It's like that, but at the end of every episode, basically. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. So, yeah, it, I need to go back and finish that show. I never finished it, but... Yeah, Amazon's got some interesting stuff coming up. I'm mainly interested by The Expanse. I guess that's of course. I, the other thing I've watched on Amazon Prime is The Expanse. But We were talking about this before we started recording, but we're going to commit to this now. If they are releasing The Expanse on a week-by-week basis, like episodically, every week we will talk about that episode of Expanse, <laughs> possibly in another podcast, possibly just part of this podcast, but look forward to that. Yeah, we might just record uh, an episode recap and publish that in the feed for this particular podcast whether you're getting this on itunes or um, youtube it'll just show up in there if we do that but otherwise what's the next one joker did you watch uh, the joker trailer yes i watched this trailer two or three times actually i am interested in this movie i think i had a what? very similar reaction to the way you just said that <laughs> i i'm like man this actually kind of looks good it's still dc and they've not done great also it could possibly be a massive bummer that's my worry is i'm worried that 
three fourths of this movie are going to be him or or more worryingly. It's going to be like something like six sevenths or like seven eighths of this movie are going to be him just having a bad time in general and slowly unwinding. And then the very last part of the movie is going to be him finally going crazy. But I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, if, if it's kind of like a half and half, like the first half of the movie is him having kind of like doing his falling down type thing. And then the second half is him taking charge of his life. That is more, the more of like him being in charge, the better, I think. But my worry is that uh, a majority of this movie, he's not going to be in charge. It's going to be very sad. I mean, it, it almost has to be just because of the nature of the story they're telling and the character that they're following. But yeah, this does look like a much more detailed character study than any superhero movie we've seen yeah. so far, which is pretty cool i mean it's not really a superhero he's a, a villain but uh and it remains to be seen how they're going to tie that into the rest of what's going on in the dc universe but because affleck is out as batman and i think yeah they're almost going to reboot is not superman anymore so if this is successful do we see him in other joker movies like, do we see him in the next Batman movie, you know? That's the question going forward is, are they rebooting the DC franchise already? Because I know they're redoing Suicide Squad with uh, James Gunn. Yeah. So that first Superman movie that came out was supposed to be like dark and gritty and character driven. And then it was just kind of not that good. <laughs> uh, this feels like them trying to go back and start over and do that over again, but do it right. Maybe. Yeah, I would be into that. I mean, maybe they finally righted the ship and they're finally starting to realize they need to like slow down and do small things that lead up to big things. And that would be great. I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see how this goes. But if like if he is a compelling villain by the end of this, where you're like sympathetic to him, that makes the next Batman movie where he's supposed to be the villain super interesting to me. Yeah, I was checking out who directed this. And apparently the writer director of this is Todd Phillips, who's the hangover. Yeah, the hangover guy. So that's interesting. You'd think it would be more comedy, but taking a more serious tone. It could still be funny. The The trailer just makes it seem a lot more serious than that. So, Do you like Joaquin Phoenix? I do. I think he's a very talented actor. I My initial concern when I heard he was being cast was, is he too old? But then again, like, how old is the Joker? It doesn't like it doesn't matter. He can be good, as yeah. old or young as whatever. Because, I mean, Jack Nicholson played him in the Tim Burton one. I don't remember how old he was at the time, but probably super old yeah so i i think he'll be he'll be good for sure and he does tend to be more choosy with the roles he takes on so i would imagine that he wouldn't have signed on if he didn't have like a compelling script in his hands so Mm -hmm. i feel like it'll it's probably a fairly safe bet Uh, zach do you like dave bautista he's the new the rock he's the new dwayne the rock johnson i don't know that anyone can replace dwayne the rock johnson for me but I do love Dave Bautista. He was great in um, Blade Runner. Even though he had a oh, small yeah. part, I enjoyed that. Yeah, he was very good in that. And that was like a more serious role as compared to his role in Game or Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> you got it on the mind. I do have it on the mind. Guardians of the Galaxy is what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, he's very funny in that. And these movies look more in line with that. Uh, he's in two movies. The first one's called My Spy, which looks... Very much like the kind of role that Dwayne Johnson would have done 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. You got to do this part before the other you one do is, the uh, other stuff. Yeah, like the Disney stuff he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other one that came out a little bit more recently is called Stuber. And it's got Kumail Nanjiani, who you might remember from Silicon Valley, playing an Uber driver who gets, uh, who picks up Dave Batista, and Dave Batista's a cop who's like tracking down this killer. And so he gets, uh, sort of press ganged into driving him around to all these crazy things. Yeah, it's like a comedy version of Collateral is what I've heard on, like someone said that on Twitter. That's a, Yeah, that is a good way to describe it. It, lo- it looks a lot like just a comedy version of that movie. So I'm down. I would of watch it. Of these two, I, I'm more interested in Stuber because I like Camille Nanjiani. Me too. Uh, and I, I like movies that take place all in one night, I yeah, think is a, a trope that I enjoy. That's pretty fun as well, yeah. 
I don't I'm, I don't think I'm gonna watch this my spy one just because I don't super like kid actors yeah but Zach did you like your name I did watch uh not <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say my name <laughs> I did watch your <laughs> name <laughs> call me by your name Zach but uh the guy who made that is making another movie and they just released a trailer for it I have not seen this yet, so talk over it and I will watch. It's got great music, so you should definitely watch it again when we're not recording and listen to the music because it has another one of those like classic songs like Your Name that I, I'm sure is going to be very emotional. But as far as I can tell, based on this trailer, yeah, I don't speak Japanese and it's not subtitled. <laughs> what I can glean from this is there is a boy who is maybe homeless living in probably Tokyo and a girl who is somehow of the rain or controls the weather in some way. Or is a cloud? I'm not sure. <laughs> she is a cloud. Did you run the description through Google Translate? No, did you? No. We should. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it live. I'm doing it right now. Uh, I didn't see the button for it. Oh, you're just copy and pasting, I bet. Yeah. Actually, when you highlight it, a little button pops up to translate it. Oh, my God. We're living in the future. I was just telling me that uh, the music is by Rad Wimps, who did uh, the music in your name. Weathering with you is what this is called in America. Lay that plot on me, Zach. Oh, it just it's literally just describing the credits, basically. And oh. then it, it basically <laughs> says weathering with you or whatever. So I'm excited for this, though. No description, sadly. But yeah, it looks I mean, I like the animation for sure. I mean, if you like anime in general, you'll like it. But I don't know I, if it's more like your name. I'm definitely interested. So I love a romantic comedy or drama with supernatural elements. And this seems like another one of those. Your name is a great example of that. That's why I've watched it. To, I think I watched it three times because it's just so good. And also, I just downloaded it, so I have it. But uh, did you ever read One Q Eight Four by Haruki Murakami? No. That's one that you might enjoy then, because I think it is also a romance that involves some supernatural elements, or maybe supernatural Give me- elements. Give me the elevator pitch for that. The description of the book is a young woman named, I can't say that name, follows a taxi driver's <laughs> enigmatic suggestion and begins to notice puzzling discrepancies in the world around her. She has entered a parallel existence, which she calls 1Q84. Q is for question mark, a world that bears a question. Meanwhile, an aspiring, this is not well written, uh, this description. <laughs> Meanwhile, an aspiring writer named Tango takes on a... Tango? I think there was another character that he had called Tango as well. He, I think he just likes that name. Anyway, a, an aspiring writer named Tango takes on a suspect ghostwriting project. He becomes so wrapped up in the work and its unusual author that soon his previously placid life begins to come unraveled. Basically, it does that thing where it follows two different characters... Uh, over a long time and then eventually they start to converge until they meet each other and they kind of it's like she's trapped in this other universe that's sort of layered over top of the real world Mm, and the upside down yeah kind of like that i guess but less creepy (laughs) and it's kind of a love story they sort of realize that they're like um, sort of star-crossed or whatever. I am very interested in that. I'll take a look at that. It's very long, I will say. Zach, speaking of anime, because we were just talking about weathering with you, which we'll have more information on when we figure out what it's about, but I'm going to say definitively that she is a cloud. (laughs) There was some casting news for Cowboy Bebop, the live-action television show on Netflix. I'm going to have to re-sub to Netflix when this comes out. Well, I don't know, Zach. Will you? Because I'm super worried about this. I like the casting a lot, but I am, have always been worried about uh, anime transitioning into live action. I guess action. that's Just, a fair point, yeah. They did such a poor job with Death Note. And Ghost in a Shell. And Bleach. Yeah, Bleach was... Uh, I only saw a trailer for that, but I was not interested in watching it. But uh, So John Cho, who by all accounts is a cool guy, is going to be Spike Spiegel. I think he can pull it off. He's like a cool... Yeah. I could see him like doing some like cool fluid kung fu and just like chilling out. And uh, I've not heard of the girl who's playing Faye, uh, but she is a girl. <laughs> Does this article not tell me her name? Daniela Panita. Panita? I don't know who that is. She's from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which I did not see. It was so bad. I saw it like yeah. a couple weeks ago. And then Jet Black is played by. 
Mustafa Shakir from Luke Cage season two, which I have not gotten around to watching, but he seems like a cool guy and he's going to be Jet Black. This was like the first anime I ever watched and it was super good. I remember there was an issue of Entertainment Weekly, which my dad would always get. And it had like a a big, like huge feature on Adult Swim because it was finally becoming a thing. It's like, oh, check out Adult Swim. It's going to happen this. It's going to be on Saturday. It's going to be only for adults. <laughs> uh, and Be- Cowboy Bebop was one of the main things on there. And the first episode just like blew me away. I don't know about you, but like Cowboy Bebop and Trigun were, uh, hold this like really high place in my like pantheon of anime. Yeah, it's way up there. It's it's so cool uh, the way they've done the style of the show. Just if you've not seen Cowboy Bebop, just like YouTube the intro to Cowboy Bebop because it's like this awesome 60s throwback music thing that they do and it's it's just it's so cool and it's also like the it's very similar to outlaw star if you remember that show oh, so good the those are the two for me i don't remember trigun as well but like cowboy bebop and outlaw star are like some of the early anime shows that i liked a lot it's so hard to watch uh, Outlaw Star right now. I think you have to have the Funimation app, which I don't have. For a while it was on Crunchyroll, but now the only way to watch it is via Funimation. Yeah, I wanted to watch it again recently, and I think I saw it was on Amazon, but you'd have to buy it. So I mm. did not end up watching it, sadly. But uh, what do you think about this? They have uh, not talked about casting Ed, which I think is very telling, because I'm not sure how they could do that Uh, and it not be terrible (laughs) yeah i mean there it's not that you don't have a reason to be concerned or cause for concern about them doing a live action anime because some things are just so anime that you almost can't do them as live action like how do you do that because like it can't just be the insane whimsical creature that ed is in the like anime it has to be grounded in, i don't know i mean do you just get some insane child actor to just go crazy well that, yeah but that's almost the the problem right because we were just talking about child actors and yeah that's what, yeah exactly like how we don't generally like them so I, I, it'll be very hard but they're gonna have something to else it. that i'm worried about the other p- bit of casting news is alex hassel who i've never heard of before is playing vicious who is like Spike's uh, nemesis throughout the whole series, but it never pops up. And so I'm worried that they're going to rush things. And like season one is going to conclude with the giant like fight with Vicious and Vicious is just going to be like just the villain in season one. We're not going to have these like cool filler episodes like, oh, there's something in the refrigerator or yeah. that insane one with that like uh, Jacques or like that Frenchman who was like flying around and uh, some sort of like experiment. Or the one with that kid who is like an immortal because he watched a crazy space gate blow up or whatever. Remember that one? That's the thing. I I do think they'll end up cutting out all of the fun like side stories. That's a bummer because they they could make seasons and seasons of this. They have so much material and I'm worried they're just going to try to – they're worried that they're only going to have one season. So they're just going to condense the entire story into one season. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm excited for this. I really, really want to see a trailer. Did we talk about that uh, Hood Cowboy Bebop that came out like maybe a month or two months ago? No. Man, that was uh, such a good... These guys probably in LA made this like basically music video for Cowboy Bebop oh, and no, they got the I, tone. I, I remember that. I think we did talk about it very briefly. I loved that. Yeah, it was very cool. Like that's what I want. I want like they need to... Ki- like here's something else. Do you think they're going to have Tank as the opening theme song they have to right they have to the thing is it's so like the style of the show is so specific and the thing that makes the show what it is so they have to go all in on that yeah i don't know i am eagerly anticipating a trailer for this but i mean if we just had casting news now who's to say they're probably not ready (laughs) i assume this is gonna be very effects heavy like they're gonna have to build sets for this so we're probably not gonna get a trailer maybe until next year considering they're just going over the casting news they are probably not ready to show anything yet but we'll see so it's picked up for 10 episodes oh hold on a second yeah yeah it's picked up for 10 episodes did they did they give a release window or no no i don't think so but that watanabe what's that guy's name yeah shinichiro watanabe uh who created the original is a consulting producer on this one so hopefully he will give his input and good things will come to pass but we shall see Next up, 
the uh, some video game stuff. Some video game stuff. We're like almost half hour into this thing, and we haven't even talked about video games yet. So the next Assassin's Creed game will center around Vikings. That's what the report says. I think there was uh, I forget. I think in I think the Division Two. In, yeah. In the Division 2, there was like a, a subtle hint about it. Yeah, I think there was like a poster on the wall somewhere in some part of the game that people were finding that looked like uh, an Assassin's Creed poster, but it was a Viking on the cover. Do you think that this is happening because of God of War? Uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe they're God of War stole their thunder, so maybe they're just... <laughs> they like traded spaces. Do you think this was like some sort of industry agreement? Like, hey, let's, I don't let's know. swap places. But this is interesting. I assume boat combat is going to come back in a big way because Vikings are all about boats. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I have not played an Assassin's Creed game except for that Project Stream thing we did, which I played maybe 15 minutes of. I'm not super well vels- uh, versed in the lore, but I mean, I don't know. Assassin's Creed is generally well liked and people are super into it, so... Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're solid open world action adventure games. And if you're super into the story that they're telling, which I played the first two and a half Assassin's Creed and I never got super into the story, but I did think that the the combat and open world stuff was fun. I haven't played anything outside of the like 10 hours of Project Stream that I played of the latest (laughs) one. But generally speaking, there it's moving more in an RPG direction, which is awesome. So they seem more up my alley now than they were even back when the first couple were released. But yeah, I just have been so out of the loop on them for so long that I it's just one of those titles that also comes out so often that I just feel yeah, like I've point. kind of missed the boat on them. And so I've been kind of hesitant to dive in on any of them. Yeah, they iterate so quickly. That's why I said maybe God of War, because maybe around that time they were like, all right, let's start up the the machine for the next Assassin's Creed. And like everyone was super into Norse stuff. So they're like, let's just, I mean, let's do that. You know, I think one that like a thing that would get me to play it again is if they went somewhere in Asia because I yeah. have been so close. I want to play that Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. And I've been watching people play Sekiro. And I have I I don't really play Souls games, but I want that experience of just like stealth killing people and running around pagodas and stuff. And I feel like if the next Assassin's Creed game, there's a lot of lore. They've never gone Eastern before, I don't think. Uh, so that would be super interesting to me. Yeah, that would also pull me back in. I think Origins was in Egypt, and I considered jumping into that game, but I was also like, I would probably be more in on this game if this was somewhere other than Egypt. Like, I don't have anything against Egypt, but I want that, <laughs> I want that, like, East Asian, like, ancient times game or whatever. I want that, like, we talked about it when, uh... I don't remember what we were talking about. I think we were talking about Ghost of Tsushima, but I used to play that Tenchu game on like PS2 yeah. a ton. I would just replay that first level over and over again and like get super tight on it. And I want just like sneaking around on like tile roofs and uh, like dropping down on people, which is why Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is interesting to me, but I don't think I would like the boss fights. Yeah. Yeah, I've also been kind of tempted by that game at times, but I know I would get it like five hours into that game and get stuck mm-hmm. and be like, oh, I'm not having any fun with this anymore. But yeah, I don't know. What's a game that's like Assassin's Creed that is set in Asia? Is there one? I'm trying to think. Like, it would be thing, a ninja game. It would have to be. The thing that I think of is, what was that, For Honor game that was like some fantasy mashup of Vikings and knights and uh, samurai. samurai. And I specifically got into playing that game because I was like, oh man, I want samurai combat. And so that was basically all I did with that game was just like play <laughs> the samurai warriors or whatever. That didn't have the staying power though. If they had like a good long story and it was like an open world game, that would have been awesome. Yeah. More Ubisoft news. Watch Dogs 3, according to a report, 
is going to be set in London. Yeah, how did they end up leaking this one? I don't know, but I remember at the end of Watch Dogs 2, them saying like, oh, we're expanding to such and such, such and such, and London. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's totally going to be London. <laughs> uh, because London is like, are like in current times, known as like the CCTV capital of yeah. the world. There's like so many cameras everywhere in England. So it just makes sense. What are the odds that the trailer has London Calling playing in the background? Ooh, or that London Bridge song. I feel like uh, there are plenty of songs that are super on the nose that will definitely end up in the game or like in the trailer. I love Watch Dogs games. I love the first one. It had the cool, it had app integration where like someone could be on their phone kind of playing with you and kind of directing what you're doing, which is very cool. And Watch Dogs 2, both of them had that cool invasion mechanic yeah. that I really enjoyed. Um, I loved the story of Watch Dogs 2 because it was basically a sequel to the movie Hackers. I hope that you're like another young group of teens in this and not like a stoic tough guy. Like, wait, what was the guy's name in Watch Dogs 1? It was something really dumb. It was like Aiden, Aiden Pierce, maybe? Yeah, I think that's right. That's one of the Ubisoft characters it has to be. <laughs> But uh, I'm into this. I cannot wait for them to... Like, they added the drone in Watch Dogs 2, which was a c- very cool thing. It's basically Assassin's Creed with, like, a ton more gadgets because it's set in modern times and, like, free running and whatnot. But I don't know. I, I'm i super into this series, and so I can't wait. Could this be something we see at uh, E3 2019? I think so. For sure. I think the article that we have linked says that it, uh, they expect it to be fully revealed at E3. So, Oh, my God. I cannot wait for E3. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played the uh, previous two Watch Dogs, but I would definitely play one if it is like you're describing where it's basically Assassin's Creed, but in modern times and set in London. That seems very cool to me. Double-decker buses, probably. We've never seen that in a video game. Yes, we have. You could drive a double-decker bus in uh, Cruising World. Oh, Cruising World. That was fun. It was hilarious because you had race cars and then you had the double-decker bus. And it was like (laughs) me and my brother would both choose that and just try to block everyone so they couldn't even drive on the same road. So Strats. Anyway, let's move on to Star Wars Celebration that starts on Thursday. And we're anticipating an episode nine trailer. Yeah, traditionally, Star Wars Celebration is where we get the trailer for the next Star Wars film. I would anticipate we're going to get at least a trailer description because they're probably definitely going to show it there. But I don't know if they're going to release it on the Internet. But uh, a trailer for episode nine, because I'm pretty sure it's been done shooting for a while, which will be exciting. Possibly more exciting, though. We're finally going to get the reveal of Fallen Order which last E3, there was like a weird thing where the guy who was making it was just like, hey, we're making it, uh, <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, so there's now, there's an official live stream. It's going to happen April 13th, which is, I want to say, th- fr- Saturday. Um, wait, is that true? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Central, I believe. So you can tune in. We'll have a link in the show notes and watch whatever this is going to be. But uh, are you excited for a Star Wars game? Yeah, it's been a while since there's been like a really good Star Wars game. And I used to like them back in the day on like the original Xbox generation. There were so many fun Star Wars games. And then they just kind of all disappeared. We had like the Force Awakens. No, not Force Awakens. (laughs) For what was it? What were those games? Uh, I know which one you're talking about. The one where you're like a shaved head guy, right? Yeah. What is the name of that game? Force Unleashed. Yes, that one. I played the first one. I don't know if I ever played the second one or not, but those were kind of fun, but they were fairly shallow. Like, they weren't very long. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I would look forward to a cool new Star Wars game, even though I'm not super into the movie franchise at this point. But what about you? I don't know. I've never played a Star Wars game before, except for like the Super Nintendo ones uh, way back in the day. Um, Yeah, you're going real old school. I like you. Yeah. I'm not super invested in Star Wars lore in general. Like I like the original movies and I liked Force Awakens and uh, Last Jedi was fine, but uh, (laughs) it had some glaring logical issues. But just like the universe is still cool to me. 
Um, but I don't know. It's not something that I'm like super drawn to. Like if there was a Lord of the Rings mo- uh, game, there have been Lord of the Rings games that I've just been like, all right, whatever. This is like a cool universe, but I'm not super engaged with it. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I mean, maybe they'll show the trailer and it'll be amazing. Like I totally would have played that crazy remember that crazy canceled star wars game that was going to be like on a certain level of coruscant yeah it was uh like one three one three yeah star wars 13 13 and it was supposed to be like an uncharted game in the star wars universe now that's something i'm super interested in yeah we don't know i mean that there it very well could be something like this where this is completely narrative and has no multiplayer elements which i'd be very interested in but uh i don't know i guess we'll see yeah i mean uh, it depends on what type of game it is, I guess. It, but if the, it really looks very cool, I would definitely be on board to play it. Uh, I at this point, I'm more excited to see what that game is than I am the next movie, and that's <laughs> weird because it used to be the other way around. But well, I mean, J.J. Abrams is coming back for that third one, so who can say how crazy this third one is going to be? It's too messed up now. <laughs> <laughs> You might be right. I mean, I don't uh, know if he, but, he can salvage it. He might be able to retcon some stuff, but... All, like, all it's going to be is the, the opening crawl is going to say, like, forget about what just happened. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, these things took place and Leia is now dead. The crawl is... Remember Force Awakens? Well, we're moving <laughs> on from there. <laughs> Shortly after Force Awakens, this is happening. This is what actually so. happened as Ray wakes up from a weird dream she had. Um, something else we should talk about. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I saw a report that there's going to be uh, a Nintendo Direct this Thursday because this is the week that Reggie is officially retiring and oh. kind of uh, handing the keys to Doug Bowser. So people are speculating <laughs> that uh, there's going to be a Nintendo Direct where we're going to get maybe some Metroid news or Animal Crossing. And they're going to do a fun little gag where the two of them are like, well, it's uh, now you're in charge or whatever. Uh, but it could be happening on Thursday. That's just what the rumor was. But I guess we'll see. What do you think about that? Uh, if they're going to have some new game stuff, I'm very interested in that. I, it could be fun to see like a skit that they do where they're literally passing uh, the torch to a new uh, to Doug Bowser. But uh, we haven't he hasn't been in a skit yet. So like we it remains to be seen, like what the tone is going to be if they're going to really like lean into him being named Bowser. Yeah, I kind of hope they do just because it's like it's too perfect that he just happens to be named Bowser. But they could avoid it altogether. I hope they don't. Yeah, it could be like actually it's pronounced Bowser or something. (laughs) Bowser Jr. He should name his kid. that. He should. Uh, should we get into what we've been playing slash watching? We should. I have not been doing a whole lot lately, so you can take it away because you got several things on here. So I've still been playing Baba is You, and it's been great. I have it on Switch, but it's also available on Steam. The A lot of the puzzles are too difficult for me, but I can beat enough of them that I continue to progress world to world. And I just like unlocked every world on the main map, and then you have to do something crazy to get into like the bonus stages. And I just got into the bonus stages and each like level of the bonus stages like flips the script in a crazy way. And it's just like, it's very interesting and like very fun to check out these bonus levels. And a lot of them are still too hard for me, but I am still able to turn the game on every night and get through at least one. So that that's the thing that's holding me back from jumping into this game because I've heard a lot of people praising this game and it's only like 15 bucks on the Switch and it would just yeah, be it's crazy cheap. something to pick up and play every once in a while so it seems pretty perfect but I my fear is that I'm going to get into it and I'm going to see like a whole bunch of really challenging puzzles and not be able to progress and I'll, be, I'll just feel stupid and <laughs> not want to play I think it anymore. In general, I think anyone can beat like every level in the first like three worlds and then starting at maybe the end of the third world, it starts to get, you don't have to beat every like zone in the world in order to get like to progress because you're collecting like petals of a flower basically. Mm. But um, I'm t- I'll tell you, it's very satisfying because I've been stuck on one for like hours and I'll just like, I'll log off and I'll log back on and I'll try that one and I, I can't do it. And I'll like beat some other ones and I'll come back to it. And when you finally figure it out, it's very satisfying. 
Yeah, I guess I have heard that it's one of those games where you put it down for a while and then when you come back to it, it'll like suddenly click and you'll get it and you'll feel really smart for figuring it out. It is. It's it's super good. It's probably it's one of the best puzzle games I've played, uh, I guess, period <laughs> ever. My my fear was that it was going to be kind of like Return of the Obra Dinn, where like people were talking about how great that game was. And so I just sort of on a whim got it on Steam and started playing it. And that game is super like it doesn't really tell you where to go and what to do next. Mm. And so you kind of have to um, muddle through and figure out what's going on. And so I just kind of like got to a point where I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. And I felt kind of like, well, everybody else figured this out. So am I just stupid? And so I didn't, (laughs) so I was like, uh, Baba is you might be one of those games where I get stuck on it and feel stupid again. So I don't want that, but something else I've been playing. I talked about it already on the podcast, but satisfactory is officially out and I got it on the Epic store and Man, every time I play it, I play for like five to six hours. And I, I like it's to such an extent that I've played the main like we started a new world when the beta, the beta actually came out was for sale. And uh, I think we've played twice and each time it's been like for six hours and we've almost burned through everything in the beta. Uh, probably the next time we play, we haven't touched oil at all, but uh, probably the next time we play, we will have completed everything there is to complete currently in the beta. But they have plans to like constantly be upgrading stuff. But man, I have so much fun playing Satisfactory. And I think we're going to make a little video about it after this. Yeah, maybe even before this podcast goes up, or the video will already be out. So be on the lookout for that on our YouTube channel. We should say it's one of those games where you're building and crafting stuff, right? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like Factorio, except... You know what it is, is the reason I was super into it. Back in the day, I used to play a ton of Tech It. Do you know what that is? Uh Uh-uh. Tech It was like a mod pack for Minecraft where you could, it like added tons of stuff. It basically collected a bunch of different mods and made them work together. So like there were mods where you could create like blocks that would instantly like smell things. There would be like conveyor belts and things like that. And just like crazy stuff like, uh, like automated miners and uh, just like really interesting stuff. It gave you goals, which is something I loved Minecraft, but like you weren't really working towards anything or at least early on before they added like the end and whatnot. And so this gave you like, you could build a functioning particle accelerator in Minecraft and there was like ways to do it. You had to like go on the wiki to figure out exactly how to place the blocks. But uh, I love stuff like that. And this is basically that this is basically tech it, but like not Minecraft and I would not say more complex because Tech it, like even now is being updated to be crazy complex. But uh, it's basically like that. You're finding resources. You're finding more efficient ways to like produce them into like first tier stuff and second tier stuff. And then eventually you like make a space elevator and then you're sending stuff up. And like every time you deposit a certain number of things, you can unlock the next tier of technology up and up and up until you have like jetpacks and stuff and it's super fun, and uh, we'll do a little video on it. Yeah, it might already be out by the time this podcast happens. But uh, How essential does the co-op feel? You know, that's a good question, because part of it is fun to play with people. It's kind of like uh, playing Legos together, where you're all just, like, working on your own thing, but you're in the same area. Yeah. But part of it is also just, like, I have been feeling this itch to just log in and start my own world and just design the perfect factory, like, the most efficient factory. Because you'll see when I show it to you, but... We kind of just like slap stuff together and stuff is like efficient. We've done the math to make sure stuff is efficient, but there is definitely a better way to lay stuff out. And there's so many different ways to do things also. Uh, So I think probably after we complete everything in the beta, I'm going to start my own single player world and just like do, I already have some plans that I wrote down of things that I want to change. Like I'm going to actually make like specific buildings for specific things and things like that. I watched some tutorials on like, uh, ways to increase efficiency, but I would say the co-op is super, super, super fun, and it's very fun to play with friends. But you can have fun by yourself as well if you just want something to like listen to a podcast too. Yeah, I was gonna say it does sound like a good podcast game, or it's a perfect a game, game that you could just sort of unwind for like a few hours at the end of the night and like turn on a podcast or something. It's so good, and also another thing about it, 
the world isn't like randomly generated like a lot of other games. Uh, it's one map, and you can choose three different starting areas. But because it's the one map, exploring is a real benefit. Like they've created all these interesting things for you to find, including like crashed ships, which have like hard drives you can get, and just like weird little things you can come upon. So like exploring really matters in that game, which I think is really interesting. And you would expect it to just be a randomly generated world, but because it's not. Like, you can come upon a crazy cave system that uh, has, like, a, a reward at the end of it if you decide to go through all of it. That sounds pretty cool. I might actually look into this game pretty soon. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you after this. We, but, uh, so, the other thing I want to talk about, Enter the Gungeon had its final update, a farewell to ARMS. They're not going to be updating the game anymore. This was originally going to be another paid DLC, but they were just like, no, we're just going to give it away for free and start working on our next project. And I logged in, I played a little bit of it. It adds a new game mode. You have to find the guy in the gungeon to unlock it. But it adds this, like, random start uh, game mode where you can get, like, a random item at the beginning. It also adds two new characters. One of them seems very hard to unlock, so I'll probably never unlock him. (laughs) But uh, this is a great game, and now it's, like, it's as complete as it's ever going to be. And I think it's on sale right now for, like, 8 bucks on Steam. Oh, really? Maybe on Switch as well. So, like, I own this on Switch and Steam because it's just a great game to pick up and play, like, one run of and what can happen in the run varies so widely just because the amount of guns that are finally in it, amount of guns and items, I should say, uh, you can have crazy broken runs where I had like a water gun that is usually not great, but then I got an item that makes all the bullets bounce almost infinitely and (laughs) also like set things on fire. So I would just like spray once and then a huge constant stream would just bounce around the room and kill things, which was very satisfying. But, uh, Enter the Gungeon is great. A Farewell to Arms is a great final farewell to it. So uh, definitely check that out. Well, I have not been playing a whole lot lately. I have, however, watched the first two episodes of Barry Season 2, which is now out on HBO. And uh, you watched the first season, right? Yeah, I had HBO while uh, Westworld Season 2 was happening. And Barry Barry Season 1 was happening during that. So I watched, like, by the time I heard about it, it like, six episodes that aired. So I watched the first episode, uh, first six episodes, and I was hooked. And uh, it's great. I wish I was watching it right now, but I don't have HBO. I am eagerly anticipating having HBO again, because I probably will binge watch this. Uh, how has the second season been? The first two episodes have been really good. The The writing in the show is very good. It, it does a good job of mixing humor and more serious stuff. Uh, it like intermingles that in a way that works really well. Not every show is able to nail that. Like a lot of shows try for it, but don't necessarily pull it off. Uh, but yeah, it's a, a dark comedy created by Bill Hader and Alec Berg. And they basically, Bill Hader plays this uh, assassin and he moves to LA and he wants to get out of that business. And so he's supposed to kill somebody from like an acting class and he goes to the acting class and ends up getting uh like super into the acting class himself and so he kind of uh befriends all of those people and uh the fact that he's a hitman on the side is sort of complicates everything around him (laughs) and constantly sort of puts different people in danger and so he's kind of trying to stay like one step ahead of everybody so it's a very fun interesting show and uh, I highly recommend it Um, you can definitely you should definitely catch up with the first season and then start watching season two. I won't spoil anything about season two because I know you want to watch it. But if you're like a Game of Thrones subscriber who's queuing up your subscribe for HBO uh, just because Game of Thrones is coming out, you should definitely take the time to binge Barry while you're at it. So it's a great show. Highly recommend it. Aaron, uh, give us your parting wisdom. Zach, everybody loves Raymond Break Apart. What? Raymond? Raymond? You said everybody loves. Everybody loves Raymond. You're right, Zach. (laughs) I'm sorry I didn't catch that. (laughs) Everybody loves break apart chocolate chip cookies made by Toll House. We can all agree on that, right? Yeah. I couldn't tell if you cut out or you just had nothing to say to that. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you did cut out a little bit, but I was able to piece enough of it together that I was able to agree. I saw a cooking video that suggested broiling your chocolate chip cookies for like a minute before actually baking them because it gives them a... You know how if you make cookies, the centers will sort of deflate uh, as they're cooling? This prevents that. So get some uh, Toll House chocolate chunk cookies, put them on a baking sheet, broil them for like a minute so they start popping up and get a little crusty on top, take them out, and then put it back down at like 350 or whatever it recommends, give it time to cool down a little bit, and then put them back in, cook them for the amount of time, and then when you take them out, they won't deflate and they'll be a really good consistency. Interesting. Have you done this? Yes, and it's it's very good. Hmm. I haven't had cookies in a while, but now I kind of want to. I have been buying a lot of break about break apart cookies for whatever reason recently, <laughs> just because I realized I could, and so I have just been doing it. <laughs> There's always that moment where you're like, hmm, you know what? I could just buy cookies. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not, you know? <laughs> what have I been doing with my life? I go to the grocery store every week. Yeah, why am I not buying cookies? But Anyway, that was my wisdom, so follow us on instagram yeah my wisdom <laughs> is follow us on twitter and instagram at starside cafe and send us an email with questions comments or discussion topics at starside cafe yes. at gmail.com and uh also check out our website starside cafe.com we post uh reviews and recommend recommendations for tv shows and movies and games and all kinds of stuff so uh yeah, follow us in all the places, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>